Jess. You know what I heard happening? What, what Becca? Why, why don't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> I heard we're doing a little something special this weekend. Oh, and what's that, Becca? Or last weekend, if you're listening to this in the future. Uh, so I heard that on Saturday, March 19th, we are releasing an exclusive show that's right what what type of show becca well you know how we said we weren't gonna cover the bachelor Uh anymore yes well (laughs) well we couldn't stay away i'm so sorry but all of the clips all of the teases and i'm gonna just say this right now i've watched one of the recent episodes and i have a lot to talk okay so just decided just and i decided we're gonna watch the last like couple episodes of the bachelor season because apparently it's a juicy one Mm -hmm. we're gonna join the bros Mm -hmm. and we are going to have a broads bros and final rose special exclusive show that we're going to be releasing this weekend and you'll only be able to access it for what a couple of days yeah a couple of days it'll be you'll be able to access it so you can tune in when it premieres saturday at 6 p.m yeah um or if you purchase that you'll be able to watch it for a few more days afterwards but then it's gone it's an exclusive virtual show Mm -hmm. and uh we're pretty excited about putting it out there. It's going to be a fun time. Excited to be with the bros. Excited to dive into this and uh, make sure that you are on the lookout. We will be dropping the link soon for tickets. Tickets will be $10. Um, and like we said, you can access this virtual show um, when it premieres at 6 p.m. on Saturday or for the next following days. But then it is gone. Yep. So we will make sure on all the Instagram accounts, we will be posting the link. And so. we'll put the link in the episode show notes when we get it as well. So keep an eye out. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Bros. All right. Let's dive into the episode. And welcome to another episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Well, hello, Broads. Good morning. Good morning. I I, I always hate starting the podcast. I'm like, hello. Good morning. <laughs> I know, just like tentative sadness. Hi. Not to make your week terrible, broads. Let's. We need a catchphrase. Time to chat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What was the paradise one? What's up? Uh, the paradise. What's up, one? Sandy Sluts? Oh yeah, beachy broads, Sandy What's, Sluts. Good morning, beachy broads. What's up, Sandy Sluts? We need like a radio show. We need something catchy that we can just say, regardless of the mood in the room. Jess here, <laughs> Becca here, chatting in. We do need to have a catchphrase to start it. Yeah, maybe we should have like a maybe we should have like a pre-roll like animatronics, like bring in some sort of robotics to just be like replace us and be like, hello, broad. It is <laughs> Jessica and Becca. We just do this. We could just do this. The TikTok like Siri voice, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Becca and Jess are making a podcast. Enjoy that was a this pretty good, episode. That uh, was very good. That was a good Please impression. enjoy this episode. If you do not, please do not say so. <laughs> There's too much inflection. It's true. If you do not, please do not say so. That's that, that's a little more realistic. <laughs> um, we should try. Let's try the next episode where we just uh, let, let's start over again. Let's start over again. But okay. we don't say hi to anyone. We don't acknowledge them. It's just we we just go in. OK, go. Wait, we don't acknowledge anyone. Mm-mm. We go. We go. What's new with you today, Jess? We just like start. Let's start oh, we just start yeah, yeah, organically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Hey, Becca, how's it going? <laughs> No, pretend like you didn't just see me, you know? Um, like I didn't just see you. Right. Okay. Yeah, so anywho, I was just <laughs> <laughs> So anywho, uh Becca, how have you been these days? How's life? <laughs> Damn it, I thought I had a career in acting. <laughs> So anywho, the I director's love like, Jessica. I, I love that. Then the listeners feel like they're missing out on part of the conversation, which is good. Well, I do know that a lot of po- podcasts start like, yeah. oh, we've been going. And I do love an organic start, but also an or- organic start can make me nervous. We could do this too. We could do uh, like, we could do like, we could start it like this. N- no, like just that is, it's not, I'm sorry. That like does not align with what we want to do here. Um <laughs> 
hey broads like we can start like that hey broads and then we put Becca, the, I the told tag, you like, the last time you did that was really upsetting to me okay dude. so can we just can we just drop it okay. hey okay. broads what's going on <laughs> no you take, need to take a pause so then people think that would be such a great way to start the podcast if we pretend like that's true then we go then we go are you ready that there's okay. some serious drama <laughs> just be like yeah honestly i i don't i don't want to no, just I, don't I bring just it don't up. Want, I just don't want to do this right now. Can we just well, I, can I we just start? I didn't can we want just to start bring it up the fucking the podcast. Yeah, can okay. we just fucking start the do podcast your, and then your, we can just talk about this later or we just drop it? Do I don't I just don't care. Thing. Okay. Do some right. thing. Okay. Good morning, broads. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> can you imagine the level of stress? Can you, let's please let's please do that on the next one please and then people and then only the in crowd knows what's going on and then everyone else is like oh. everyone else and is like they're gonna be they like drop holy <laughs> shit they actually do they not let that up. shit in or do it mid midway through an episode <laughs> just be like um hey can we take a quick bathroom break and then i like get off the mic and you hear me in the background just be like seriously becca are you fucking kidding me like i, I can't even believe you brought that up or i'm like, just i'm so frustrated right now or it's not even related to us i'm just screaming on the phone with grace and i'm like <laughs> what the fuck were you and then you're like and then you're like calm down calm down breathe dude breathe breathe <laughs> yeah, and just I'm like, like what were you thinking just like evan the fucking audio is fucking messed up again <laughs> i asked you a hundred times this is why i say you're a moron so anywho we're talking about relationships today evan and i have been having so much sex it's been great <laughs> <laughs> just full bullshit <laughs> i love that i love that chaos anyway um so what do we have to talk about today? We've got a lot to talk about. We do have a lot to talk about. I am in a little bit of a weird space right yeah. now. Um, I, if you didn't see on Instagram, we lost our big dog, Boris, un- very unexpectedly. Oh, so if I'm a little weird and a little off, I apologize. I feel like I'm going like in and out, you know, where you're like. Such is grief. I'm, yeah, the grief, the, the grief cycle where I'm like sobbing for one second and then just. You're like Boris who? Or just like just being like, you know, through the tears, just like laughing about whatever, you know. So I'm a little I'm a little funky today. But yeah, we lost we lost him unexpectedly. He was old, but he was just like a running around like a little pup the past year. So we just we did not expect it. But and there was like no drama. He like breathed his last and was gone. It was in the middle of the night. Like it was wild. And and yeah, there was never anything. I'm so glad he wasn't in pain at all. Yeah. Um, but it was just so jarring because, you know, we didn't expect it. And it w- it's been so interesting because obviously, like, we're massively grieving the fact that because we just adored him. Yeah. But it's weird because Evan and I have been, like, processing the past couple days. And there's just, like, so much when there's a relationship with anyone, right, there's so much other there's so many other layers and, like, history to that. Yeah. Right. Um, Not to mention the stages of life that you have gone through with him being there. That's the thing, right? So we got him um, like like right when we got married, like right when we got married, and it's we're coming up on our ten year anniversary in a week. So it was like we got him like two weeks after we got married, Um, and so he was like he was it was like the family, right? It was like the three Mm -hmm. of us, and so obviously it was just seeing us like being there when we first got married, first Christmas, like, and then having lots of, like, family drama, leaving jobs, Ember being born, moving to Los Angeles, like, so much. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, for me personally, it was, like, he, we got him when I was really struggling with Mm -hmm. my mental health. And he was just, it was the best because it was just such a distraction and he was just so precious. And so I put, like, all of my anxious energy into babying him yeah. and training him and everything. And yeah, he was just the best. And he was just always, I don't know. He was just, he's because he was so big too. It was like this big presence there always. Yeah. So there's just this, this whole, but you know, um, when we were, when Evan and I were talking, you're like, Oh, when someone's th- like that much a part of your life, there's such an impact, but also when then they're gone, you kind of realize other things, other layers. Like all of a sudden, you know, Evan's having this process where he's like, Boris kind of took the place for a loss of family that mm-hmm. I felt that I haven't really addressed or dealt with internally. Like 
I have to now process like this fact that like, yeah, there were these family struggles and I kind of just took him and replaced him with that. And then mm-hmm. the, the two of us became his family for however many years. And now it's like, oh my gosh, he's gone. And coming face to face with so many of those things that you're just thinking like, oh my gosh, there's so much grief because yeah. there's the loss of our, our sweet baby. But, you know, realizing like, oh my gosh, so many things that like, I hadn't processed. Yeah, loss know? will bring up a lot of unrelated stuff that hasn't right. been dealt with. And it's been a long time, you know, I, I feel I feel very lucky that I haven't experienced a lot of loss it recently in my life in that way. And so it's been a minute and it was like, oh goodness, like, you know, yeah, it brings up so many levels, so many layers. But how's anywho, Ember doing? <laughs> dude. You know, it is a joy to have Ember around because she does not let you stay sad for long because she's so busy. <laughs> Evan are like Evan are trying to cry and she just she just nonstop the stream of consciousness that's coming out of her mouth. You're like, I can't even I can't even pause to take a moment to process. Um, but she was so sweet because when it first happened, she was obviously very upset. And it's, you know, it's the traumatic. Yeah, that's, like, and that's a new, it's that's a also whole, a new thing. It's a new conversation. And so there was a lot of conversations from there. Um, and she's, you know, she's always liked to talk about passing, though. You know, she's always been very in tune with that. Mm-hmm. And so she was, right after she was bawling, but man, she was like, she was throwing truth bombs at us <laughs> left and right, like straight up. The first thing is it was like, we need to keep talking about him because that's how he'll stay with us right, longer. We right, need to keep right. talking about him. And then we were sitting by by a pool and she like, she handed me a pedal and then she took a pedal and she goes, we need to throw these in the water for Boris. And she's like, one of them is you and one of them is Boris. And we throw the petals in the water and she goes, see, they're floating in different directions, but eventually they'll meet up again. And you were like, and I was like, first of all, sob. You're Second, like, you are the Buddha. <laughs> it's literally like, you are a god from another planet. <laughs> what is happening? And then, but then she's just kill, like making us laugh, like absolutely yeah. making us laugh. She goes, <laughs> I don't know where she gets this from because, oh no, did you spill the green juice? It's not about me. Could keep going. <laughs> but it's a cute fit though. You don't want to mess that up. You're like, keep oh going. I'm okay. God. Keep going. It's um, okay. No, sh- we were... <laughs> We were just cracking up because I don't know where she got this from because we are not a religious household. I guess maybe she's heard it from. Yeah, I was gonna say I could guess some sources. Yeah, maybe from moms and dads, other you uh-huh. know the parents, um, the parents of us. Uh, but she goes all of a sudden she's crying, and then she kind of gets distracted by something, and then she points to the sky, and she goes, "God." <laughs> 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 she goes, God, since you took Boris from us, I don't believe in you anymore. And nice. just pointed and screamed it at the sky. Nice, nice, Paused nice. for two seconds and then goes, uh-oh. If I say that, maybe he'll do something bad to me. Never mind, God. <laughs> Still believe in you. <laughs> like She's just cementing her bets in here. She's just like, not sure what the what this whole dynamic is, but I'm just going to make sure that, you know, we're good to go. This just remind me of a thought I had the other day. I know that there is people out there. There has to be people out there who religiously subscribe to every religion so that all their bases are covered. I mean, sure. Why not? But I'd like to talk to them. Like, and I'm not just talking about like, oh, I got my base covered. Or like, not, there's like got a univer- to be, not a no, universalist. There's got to be. Like- no, there's got to be someone out there that is like, I am a devout Christian, Muslim, Buddhist. Uh, just to make sure we're all yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. Here's the problem, though. A lot of these, at least I know Christianity. Christian is kind of the big one. Christianity, though, is like, if you believe in anything else, it's wrong. As far as I know, it's kind of the only one that's that serious about it. Okay. But you could still, I guess that's now sounding like multiple personalities. I'm like, you could devoutly believe that that's true. And you're like, even I might be going to hell. Well, you know, if you believe in everything. confusing. I've been, I've been deep, uh, <clears throat> I've been deep in the whole simulation concept oh, lately. Yeah. So mm. that's where I, that's where I lay my religion mm. is in the simulation world. Well, I mean, technically, regardless of whether or not we are a simulation in the way we understand that, it is all a simulation because we are, uh, experiencing everything we experience through the simulation that is our mind. That's true. So... 
I was down a dark wormhole of simulation talk recently. <laughs> so does that assume that there is someone orchestrating the simulation? I mean, there has to be to a certain degree. Right. Right. So, oh, man, I, I would but, love to have someone come on because I think that like I'm so interested by the concept of the simulation because and I know so many like great, brilliant minds believe that's what we're in. Break down what the what like break it down. OK, so there's different. There's different camps. varieties. There's sure. different camps. And I want to say this. I would love to have someone come on who's actually like schooled in this sure. and has like the knowledge of it because I think there can be very dangerous concepts when you talk about it being a okay. simulation because all of a sudden people are then like, well, it doesn't matter. Okay. You know what I mean? This Which is, is why not... you've got to watch Westworld. I know. I know. Because that is literally, the, they're all living in a simulation, but their experiences are still painful and real. Right. And that's the thing. So yeah. so someone who's schooled in it, yeah. I, I've heard someone speak on it before and and was it was a very beautiful concept and, and, and talking about like the dangers of some of the talk of simulation sure. that then is not treating human life with value and all sure. these things um, or things not mattering sure. or whatever. Um, but basically, you know, the, the broad stroke would be that what we're experiencing right now is either a one-to-one -one where there's some part of us or some brain format mm -hmm. somewhere that's almost like video game operating our life. Okay. Right. Or it's like a group think mm -hmm. where we're all connected. Um, and there's like individuals or groups like diving Puppete into puppeteering, puppeteering that. Like but a, Sims. One of the ones that I've heard, which I find very interesting, is that this is the past and that maybe we've destroyed the planet mm -hmm. and there are people from the past who are like basically using us as VR and going back on memories to see where we we did it wrong so that in the future well, they're the not doing great. They're idiots if that's the case. There's so many interesting camps about it. And then there's all these people. Yeah. So it, it just is kind of just kind of fucks with Here's my brain a little what bit. what I have to say about that. I find all of this so. Here she goes. <laughs> <laughs> We're. Re uh, I'm glitching. I'm glitching. My simulation Obviously, is glitching. I'm glitching. You're glitching. We are then it, when we when people start talking about this, mm -hmm. then we are doing the same thing that people did fucking hundreds of years ago when they made Christianity. They're like, what if what if there's a God who's in control of our destiny? And now we're like in the in the postmodern one. We're like, there is no God, but there might be people playing video games. Oh, with no, us. for sure. For sure. But, but, you know, I think What's this, the difference? No, it's um, the modern version because now we're seeing like how technology has jumped and yeah. it's unexplainable, yeah. right? Just the jump every few years does not make any sense. They say it just doesn't, doesn't line up. It and it's weird to me. because we all like, it's almost like we have always been living in simulation play, whether it be mm. sports theater sure then into video games sure you know and it's like we're getting more and more and more maybe what the origin is which is a simulation well i have wondered before if uh i actually have wondered before if we have already gotten to this point before and yes. there was a fall of, there was a die off a fall of civilization mm -hmm. millions billions of years and we're trying and we're this trying it again well from not that it's anything conscious on anyone's part, but like we've already gotten here before and uh, it, it uh, didn't work and we all died. Mm -hmm. There was like a nuclear fallout or we all got poisoned by mm -hmm. our own actions. And then but then, you know, cells happened and humans happened over. And then, yeah, but there's a possibility that's already happened before. I mean, you even think about like Rome, you know, like Rome fell. Rome had like super advanced. Rome wasn't built in a day. Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> Yeah, just start throwing out like when in Rome, <laughs> you know when in uh, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but like they had super advanced technology for the time. Like they had super advanced like aqueduct plumbing systems. Like, mm -hmm. and they were at the point in their society where people were living leisurely lives, where they didn't have to uh, 
they didn't have to focus on survival and mm-hmm. that's where shit got wacky. Although I don't get what people are saying. Now I'm just ranting. I don't get what people are saying when um, they say like they can't explain the jumps because like it all makes sense with the industrial revolution. Like we got to the point where we could let machines or cheap labor handle everything. And then with globalization, like that frees up so much more space and time that's no longer being put into survival. And we just have an exponentially larger population, which increases like cheap labor and the opportunity for the wealthier people to have time to sit and think and do all those things. And a lot more of them. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to me. I mean, you think in Rome, how many people were even on the planet? True. Not that many. True. Yeah. I mean, I sure don't know. I don't know. I have no wisdom in this because this is all very much of a YouTube education. <laughs> I don't have any education either. That's I'm what I'm saying. I would love shit to up. have like, I would love to have like a brilliant scientific mind come and explain. I would love the... to argue with them for the full two hours. Amazing. I would love to be a part of that. I would sit silently and watch the ping pong battle of it all. I would love to have someone come on and like really explain it because when I'm watching them, I'm like, oh, okay, I can process this. And then when it's like, hey, you explain it. I'm like, uh, don't know how. Don't quite get it, but when I'm taking it in, I'm kind of like, this makes sense. Would you be sad if it was a simulation? No. You'd be happy? As if those are the only two things you could feel. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sad or happy. <laughs> no, I think it would just be like, I would, it would be like a knowingness. Yeah. So it, it would feel like, okay, well, mm. I can put rhyme or reason to something, which, God. speaking of, I really, really, really need to hear about your past life regression okay. session uh, before we do that. All right. I feel like that's honestly, honest to God, it's the perfect... It's perfect segue. It's the perfect segue from, right. from, from simulation to past life regression. So with past lives, by the way, bef- whatever, let's take a, let's take a <laughs> okay. let's take ad break okay. real quick. Okay. Broads, you know, as I go through life, it becomes even more obvious that what makes life really good, like really good, are the little things like fresh fruit on a summer morning. Oh my God. Uh, a movie night with the family, a brand new comfortable bra that you feel amazing in, the little things, like I said. And for the best bras, underwear, and loungewear, I am obsessed with Third Love, the online shop that is completely changing the shopping experience. It's what I'm wearing right now. It's, what, it's the only thing I ever wear is Third Love. And there's a high likelihood that your first bra shopping experience wasn't a very pleasant one. It was not one of those little pleasant moments. If I had to guess, I would say that things probably didn't drastically improve for you after that because the way that everyone shops for bras is broken. But with Third Love, they're changing everything, man. The experience has gotten an overhaul. You take their little online fitting room quiz, which is great, too, because you can do it from your couch, your bed, your you know, your phone, whatever. And then they determine your best fit based on a series of questions about your bra shape, about your current fit issues, um, about the bras you have, so on, so forth. And after you're finished, you're going to be shown personalized results based on all of the questions that you answered. And Third Love offers so much variety. Unlike traditional retail stores, they have bras in cup sizes A through I and even offer half sizes, which are amazing. Yeah, Overall, you have 80 different sizes to choose from and tons of different styles based on your lifestyle, style preferences. Third Love truly does have something for everyone. And you can shop with confidence because if you get your items from Third Love and you're not 100% obsessed, you can return or exchange them for free for 60 days. Feeling is believing. Upgrade to everyday pieces that love your body as much as you do. And right now you can get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash chatty. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash chatty. Broads, I spent years, and I do mean years, uh, wanting, no, needing to be a meditation wellness girl. Okay, you know those folks who just are the epitome of balance at all times. Nothing ruffles the feathers. You know the type. Well, the problem is I was not good at that. Okay, I was not good at doing all the things that the wellness folks do. uh, Not unassisted anyway. But then I started using Calm, and I felt like a brand new woman. Suddenly caring for myself became a simple and essential part of my day Thanks to Calm. I've been using Calm for years. I love Calm. Calm is the number one, the number one mental wellness app that gives you all the tools you need to improve the way you feel. And when you use Calm, you're going to get access to things like guided meditations, which can help reduce anxiety. They have curated music tracks, which help you relax, 
rest, recharge, all of that. And they have a whole library of sleep stories for children and adults. I love that they have that variety. Plus, check out their newest collection of daily movement sessions that are designed specifically to relax your body and your mind at the same time. Like I said, I started using Calm uh, a while ago and within just a few days of using the program, I remember feeling just this major difference. For one, I was sleeping better, falling asleep faster, staying asleep longer, and then I would wake up more well-rested. But in addition to that, I just feel more balanced as I go through my day, more relaxed, better equipped to handle whatever comes my way. Calm really does keep me calm, cool, and collected no matter what, for the most part anyway. (laughs) So grateful for Calm. (laughs) For listeners of the show, Calm's offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription. That's a good deal. Yeah, it is. Go to calm.com slash chatty. C-A-L-M dot com slash chatty. You're going to get 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash chatty. Okay. Okay. Lay it on me. So Broads, if you didn't listen, uh, two episodes ago, I talked about doing a past life regression (laughs) session. Oh, yeah. Two Last ago, Thursday's think? episode, yeah. yeah. Um, and I had a pretty intense experience. So if you haven't listened to that, there's that. And now Becca went to the same past life regressionist as I did. And when I asked her how it went, she told me that she told me on the podcast, but she said it was weird. So obviously I am weird. curious like a cat right now. But here's the first thing I have a question about. Yes. If like with the theories of reincarnation, Mm -hmm. which I know past life regression is doesn't like fully synced with the idea of reincarnation. But can't you be like creatures and things? Why does no one ever have a past life regression where they're like a dog? Maybe they do. Hmm. Never heard of it. Everyone's always Cleopatra or some shit like that. So this is what I'm going to be real with you about. Uh That's one of the reasons I was so skeptical, Uh Susie, about past Uh life regression, because a lot of the people I had talked to, they were like, Joan of Arc. Sure, you were, bitch. (laughs) They're like, I was a god. And I'm like, okay, well, all these things sound very fancy. So when I started to have mine and I was like a 15 year old girl, like Mm -hmm. in a thatched house Mm -hmm. and whatever, it was like, I don't. And then even my other one was like, I wasn't some famous anything. I was just me in a job. Mm. And that felt then very like real to me. Mm. I wasn't like, oh, I'm envisioning (laughs) myself as King Richard. (laughs) You know what I mean? Or like, honest to God, I was this famous pop superstar. Like, no, it just wasn't. It wasn't like that. Yeah. Is anyone ever a bad person in their past life either? I do not know. I mean, there, I mean, obviously you have to have been. Sure. I will say with both of mine, there were elements that I was aware of, uh-huh. of some of my negative points. Well, this is a good time for me to say that I was Cleopatra. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I was like, I mean, honest to no, God, just I kidding. believe just it. Kidding. I truly believe it. So <laughs> um, here's the... I don't... I don't I I don't believe that there actually are past lives that we're going to. Okay. I don't. I think it's but I so that's what I think. I do think that it is still incredibly powerful. Of course, this is just what I believe because your subconscious or your unconscious or your conscious, I don't fucking know, I'm not Freud, uh <laughs> is bringing something to the surface, is bringing a narrative to the surface that has some relevance because your brain is creating it. Mm -hmm. So I just, it just doesn't make sense to me if it was our past life that we would be able to like access it that easily. Okay. Okay. That just doesn't, especially if we've had, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. And also I don't get why this is my also my human brain, but I also just don't get why we would have like why wouldn't each life just be its own thing? Why would we have past lives? Why, and why would one why would there be like a trail of lives? I don't get that. Well, as someone without a human brain, I can say <laughs> I do believe. It. <laughs> no, I mean, I yeah, that's the thing. That's why when I when I was with her what i did appreciate was that it was like you don't have to believe in this and this might literally just have been dreams or thoughts or whatever it might have been that caused that had some sort of effect on you um 
But I don't know. I mean, I suppose if we're all energy and energy doesn't die and then, you know, when you when your actual body dies, your energy goes somewhere. Maybe there's I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't buy it that I have actual visual memories from uh, someone else's existence. So when you did it, did you have was it just nothing? No, no. But but also that's. But also that's where I'm like, no, 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 I'll, I'm going to go into it. I'm okay. going to go into it because I still had past lives, but I don't think I just don't think that they were like, I just don't believe they, that you don't think they were actual I lives. I don't believe that they were a consciousness that I, I don't believe that it was like this chain of consciousness that has led to me now. Now, off of the simulation yeah. talk, yeah. if we are truly all connected. Sure. And our minds are kind of all intertwined and because we all are energy, right? Yeah. Maybe there is tapping into someone else who was once here. I mean, I also just think our brains are so powerful and imaginative and creative. We have the power in our brains to manifest physical symptoms. That's true. Or to even heal, like to even reverse cellular change in our body through our minds. Mm -hmm. Our minds are so powerful where you know we can we can have a fever high fever and just start hallucinating that fucking things are in the same room mm -hmm. with us so i guess that's kind of where i stand with it is i think that i think it is very easy and it's not to say that's not powerful or impactful or uh relevant to your life or your experience i think it's very easy to put i, I think i could put someone in a meditative state mm -hmm. and have them conjure up an experience a visual sensual experience in their mind mm -hmm. because <laughs> like how, mm -hmm. i know what you meant by sensual but <laughs> i could give them an <laughs> orgasm by just speaking to them you're like trust me i could absolutely get someone to get into a meditative sexual state <laughs> I mean, by my voice. <laughs> I mean, I think that Marianne has a. I think that people have gifts and all that. I think. I think that she has a gift for sure. But yeah, I guess my point being is that, like, when our minds are, when we let our minds wander, when we give them the space and freedom and time mm -hmm. to do so, they'll do crazy shit. Yeah, and um, and I mean, even when you just think of like Lord of the Rings, like who the like. Tolkien like he created an this entire world network of yes and a, a world mm -hmm. and so I think that a lot of our brains are capable of that so anyway that's my disclaimer oh that's you should have read my stories when I was in third grade girl <laughs> <laughs> Tolkien I mean, had nothing <laughs> Tolkien had nothing Tolkien on who? me Tolkien who you know so that's my disclaimer now mm. When I went into the little state, whatever, she's like, oh, what do you see? I had this. Um, yeah, it's I see. I'm I'm, I'm really conflicted right now because okay. as I'm saying it, I'm like, I don't I I'm interested to see what Gray says because Gray did it last night. Yeah, he had an experience. He did. And I wonder if I I actually and this is so funny is because he always thinks I'm the woo woo spiritual one. I think he actually believes that it was him and it had past life that he experienced. Yes, I think him and I are connected in that way. Yeah. And I feel like when Evan does it, he'll have probably similar feelings to you. Yeah, I just I so <laughs> Gray as, and I are gonna like do a podcast <laughs> together and just be like, oh my talk god, to Wait, us we have about. to announce that. We have to announce that too. Gray yes. and Jess are doing. We're doing a little spouse swap episode thingy yes so i'm gonna do an episode just with evan yes gray, we're gonna just gonna do it with gray next week next week next week we're gonna do it i'm so excited gray's like i want to talk about disney you're like let's talk about past lives we're gonna and do gonna both honey awesome <laughs> i'm so excited be awesome yeah so that's my the, my disclaimer is that i do not believe these are my past lives as i am about to talk about them as if they were my past lives okay yes yes so i'm giving that disclaimer okay so I had like this squinty thing where there was something bright and I was like, Ugh, it's like maybe it's the lamp above me. I need to turn off the lamp. But then I still had like, oh, God, I hate that feeling. And then I was sort of getting like frustrated at the same time because just like this is fucking stupid. And like my eyes were just like all squinty. And I was just like, oh, and then she's like, well, maybe you're looking at the sun. And that's the other thing is the power of suggestion is very strong. Mm hmm. 
And the power of asking a direct question of like, like if you ask someone, what do your feet look like in your brain? Your, go- your brain is going to answer the question, right? Yes. Your brain will make feet immediately. Yes. Like if I said, like if, you know, if I was like making up a person in my head right now and you said, what do their feet look like? I would get in immediately sure. an image yeah, sure, of, of a made up person. Because your player one in the sky sends you a little message. <laughs> <laughs> foot gif, foot jif, foot jpeg. Exactly, exactly. Bloop. They're like, oh, I got that. Just bloop. In the- <laughs> um, so that's the that's the other reason is I'm sort of like the the power of like asking a direct question is very strong or we're mm-hmm. suggesting like is is it the sun and that will lead your brain door down a whole other rabbit trail so but then I was like oh that actually makes sense it feels like I'm squinting into the sun it feels like I'm looking up I feel like I see like I and this is the other thing too is it's not like the way I, I want to describe it is it's not like I'm actually seeing it it is like my brain is conjuring up images sort of like on demand right it's like flashes of images but i didn't but i sort of felt like i was still controlling it okay like yeah. i was like oh yeah. i see trees and i'm like my then you know, i'm like i'm making up trees mm-hmm. sort of where i was at it's like it, it's like if it's like with improv you know if someone says like what are you buying right now and you go borax yeah why the hell did you come up with borax no, your, no, no. Brain your brain just, was like borax yeah. mm-hmm. so anyway I saw the sun, see trees, sort of like see like stars through the trees. And then she's like, oh, look at your feet. You know, like, who are you? Where are you? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a man or a woman. I don't fucking know. I don't have any clear thing of like, I'm a man or a woman or where am I? And that's where I was started, sort of starting to get annoyed. But then I was like, oh, maybe I'm a baby. But maybe I'm a baby. And actually someone's like holding me. That's why I can't like, that's why I'm squinting at the sun because I can't like look away from the sun. That's why I'm looking up at the trees because mm-hmm. like someone's holding me. So the whole thing with that one, the whole story that I made up with that one was that I was a baby. Uh, I was with my mother by the hearth, by the fire, whatever. I feel this presence coming on my right. Someone's taking me and there I feel like, and I feel like everyone's got these kind of cloaks, like this kind of ancient stuff or something. And the it was a woman who took me and I see like a dark flash of fabric and then I see like a freckled chest and then we're moving through a forest and she was like, why is the person taking you? And I was like, because she's crazy. This person doesn't even know why they're taking me. They're just taking me. And then we make it onto the other side of the forest. And then I felt like there was and then pretty sh- then it was like sort of this desert area with like this village and then there was a big beam of light and then me and the woman died. And I think we kind of like de- de- dehydrated or died. I had the sense that like, cause I had that picture of being at the hearth at like my mother's breast and then seeing this freckled chest. Like I had this. It wasn't your, like when you saw the freckled chest. That was the, that was the person who took me. Right. And I was, I sort of had this connection of like, oh, this person didn't have like any milk or anything right, to give me. And right. I was an yeah, infant. I'm saying it's a different breast than what right. you were used to. And then I was an infant and. So then you w- went, left the hearth into the village and then you were in the desert? No, it was like, I, I had this image of the hearth and it, it's not like I was taken away there, but I had that image. And then like, I just felt like this this uh, being coming on my right. Not like I was at the hearth and I felt this being. It was sort of like, it was all very disjointed, which does make sense if it was a baby. Cause then it was like, son, look, trees. Right, it's basics. It's basics. You're just, yeah. And not even in a order of time. Right. Which infants also don't have a, like a ordered sense of time. Mm-hmm. It's all like, so then it was like image of, but that one was more like third person, like image of baby with mother at hearth. And then it was like black. And then it was like feeling of this person or being closing in on me on the right. Then it was f- rippled fabric. Then it was freckled chest. Then it was sort of like feeling like we were going through a forest. Then it was like bright sun, can't look. Then this image, third person image. So it was sort of switching of like third person image to like first person, like uh, seeing glimpses of fabric chest trees sun Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then there was the zooming out where i could like see what was going on in the church so then after this feeling of going through the forest then it was zoomed out third person 
woman with me with this cloak, sort of a desertous space on the other side of the forest with sort of a village in the distance and uh, and then the sense of like this big light beam sort of coming and like and sort of like absorbing both of us. So it was like death. That was like right. death. It was like right. this light just sort right. of settling in over How us. did you feel during this? Mm, I don't know. I didn't feel like any... The presence, like the, the, the presence when it was coming in on the right was a little like, kind of like creepy. Uh, felt a little dark. But that was... But I honestly like didn't feel any strong emotions. And I guess that sort of made sense because if it was like if it was a baby, it would be like a lot of just confusion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I didn't really feel anything. I was just kind of like, okay, weird, weird. So but that wasn't even the weirdest. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, this is already, <laughs> this is already <laughs> dynamic. Weird. Okay. Then, so even when she was doing the little like, uh, like making you settle whatever state, like go into your nature place. Yeah. So basically what you do during this is that you, she has you, if you have, if you tap into a life or whatever you're tapping into, right. Then to go back to another one, you, you kind of reset, you take yourself back to the similar nature spot in your brain, almost like a purgatory, perhaps a pleasant mm. purgatory mm. in between. And then you can try to access another part. I was very distracted during that point okay distracted with your own thoughts everything a sound in the other part of the house the light coming in through the window like everything mm. and i was like not able to really like stay with one nature spot i was just kind of like everywhere which was also frustrating and then the but i did keep getting this image that then came back to me then with the second one so I was kind of like, then I was feeling better because I was like, got that shit out of the way. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt too. I'm like the first one, I was like, that was rough. And I feel like I kind of needed to like get there. Yeah. Well, and it sounded like your first one was very vivid though. The first one was very vivid, but it was upsetting. But uh -huh. I also had frustration at, cer at okay. certain points in that interim okay. space because I was like, I need to focus more. I need to focus right. more. And You're I was struggling. Brain. But then I got in there. Okay. But it still was very... I felt very distraught in it. Uh -huh. And then once I got to my second okay. one, I felt way more like, I felt like it was in the flow of it. Like, I felt I'm that like, way. Okay. With, felt that way second, halfway through the second one and through the third oh, one. Oh, a third. She I was busts out a moving, third. You baby. were moving. Damn. Well, the first, the baby one was kind of fast. And that one, just the whole time I was like, okay, this is stupid. But then also if it actually was a past life or whatever, she was like, that's a really difficult one to read because your like adult brain is accessing like baby brain memories. Right. And like, what does that even look like? Yeah. yeah. It's just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. What that, is, that would be frustrating. Yeah. What is happening? Mm -hmm. So it's like a, that's like a, honestly like a movie. Like yeah. when all of a sudden, like the, the fairy godmother turns you into a baby again, but you have your adult brain. It sounds like a Disney nineties movie. And you're like, God, what am I supposed to do now? I got my adult brain and the baby body. Yeah. And it's just flashes of like light and colors and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. you're like, uh, so that was out of the way. Then the second one, I immediately, okay. I was an alien. Be jealous, bitches. Stop it. Be jealous. Stop it right now. Be jealous. I was on another motherfucking planet. Stop it right now. So like I the nipples are hard. I like I, everything. That is that's okay. I know you don't believe in that shit, but that that like gives me jitters. Like, oh my God, other planets. She said I'm a light being, okay? She said <laughs> I'm a light being. So suck it. What does that mean? She said it means I have gifts. I have a I'm on a higher frequency. Yeah. But it does make sense to me. Like we've always talked about, we've always talked about your um, ability to like, you know, whatever Lenato is on, Jessica is just like, you know, you're tapped in, the fortune comes, like you just kind of whatever you tap into, there's success, all of that stuff. So who knows? But, but uh, yeah, she said, which is probably just because she listened to the podcast, but she was like, Light beings, people either really are drawn to them or they totally reject them. It's very polarizing. I'm like, yeah, you just watched my season of The Bachelor. Okay, Marianne. Okay. <laughs> How do you think? The, but, but, but 
Why do you think that? Well, she did. She did watch my season of The Bachelor. She did, so she knew who you were. She actually didn't when she booked the session. She like she was like, oh, I didn't like make the connection until. Oh no, but I'm saying when then she saw you on oh, the yeah. Zoom, she was like, I know who you are. Oh, yeah, basically. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. funny. Or yeah, so that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. <laughs> It was funny. <laughs> but she actually didn't tell me any of this. She told Gray that. She told Gray that oh, okay. I was a light, a polarizing light being with gifts. So uh she probably knew she couldn't tell me directly, otherwise it's gonna go straight to my <laughs> alien brain, to my alien head. So okay, so you know in like Yellowstone how there is those pools where they're blue, they're deep blue, and then they emanate out into like yellow, mm-hmm. red. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Like the thermal pools. Mm-hmm. Have you been there before? No, but I've seen photos. Wow, you guys need to go. It's so cool. I know. I want to go again. Okay, so I was seeing that, and then like these, it was like these white sands that were like all around it. They're like, you know, kind of like rushing around it. And then the sky, it like looked like a tunnel, but it wasn't a tunnel to the like this light at the end of the tunnel. But I knew that like, it's not like I was in a tunnel. It was like, the sky was a tunnel okay. and then there was the light on the one end. So the, the sands are rushing, whoosh, the white mm-hmm. sands, and it's kind of like all kind of rushing around with this light beam on one end. And then on the other end, so there are like these pools and this white whoosh, swirling kind of sand everywhere, if you would call it sand. I don't know. That's the only way I can describe it. And then there's this cloak to bean that doesn't have a face it's just like a light beam in the face it wasn't creepy okay it's just like a it light beam sounds in the face. like just i like would shit myself but go ahead <laughs> it just it made sense in the space yes, you know you're yes. like we've got this we've got this sort of like yeah. intergalactic vibe going on yeah, you just got, got this like cloak this- and this just like beam. this is like light beam thing white from the face area and then I could have a sense that I was the same. And then there was like this big orb light thing, kind of like that light right there. That was like a big ball. <laughs> and then this other bean was showing me how you can like whoosh, dissolve into it and like cut, dissolve out of it, like showing me with my hand. And I was like, whoa, whoosh, dissolving into the, like letting the light absorb you and dissolving into it and then coming out of it. And then at that point, I thought, mm, I don't think this is Earth here. No, it doesn't sound like it. Not quite. So then I was like sort of attached or absorbed into this orb ball of light. And then I was going through the sky, through like space. And then I was landing on Earth. And then I landed in like India. And then there was this little Hindu boy who was like looking at me and I'm in this big marketplace and he's like looking at me. You know how little kids, how they know things yes. or like in movies, how yes. they know things where they're like seven and they're looking at you like you're a fucking alien, but no one else can tell that kind of thing. Yeah. That's kind of how the kid was kind of looking at me. And then he was just like leading me through this market area with like a with like a, you know, like a water buffalo or something. And there's all these other people in the market. She was like, what time frame was it? I'm like, I don't know. Like it, it, it was hard to tell because it's just like. I don't know this marketplace situation could be now I don't know and uh and then I was walking through the marketplace and she was like oh so you time traveled I'm like I don't know I didn't time I just space traveled so then and then I went back to the other place so I just like kind of walked through the market for a second and then I went back to the space place and then I got this since they didn't like speak to each other me and the other being but i got this sense that like i was not supposed to do that like i wasn't supposed to go to earth and so then i sort of got put in like i got sort of like i got i kind of felt it on my body i got like sort of like weighed down almost like i was in an underground not like i i don't know how to describe it it's not like i was in an actual physical prison but i got this sense that i was like like shut down I sort of like felt underground and almost like there was this big steel thing on top of me that was like weighing down so that I couldn't leave. Like I was sort of like you were punished. getting punished. Yeah. For for going to Earth. But not like a sexy, sexy punishment. No. OK. No, I was just kind of like <sighs> kind of like grounded, got grounded kind of. And then and then I was back in the and then if we're like skipping around, I guess, or whatever, I was like 
back in the space place. But what was so interesting is like the vibe of it before I had like left was that it was this beautiful mystical place. And then I felt sort of like dejected. I was like, oh, I'm sort of like trapped here. But the interesting thing that I got from that, um, because Marianne was like, oh, like you were trapped, like you weren't allowed to like go anywhere, like someone was trapping you. And I was like, that's not like the, the, the lesson I'm getting from it. Like the lesson I'm getting is sort of on perspective. Like it was a beautiful mystical place until I decided it sucked. Right. Until you tapped in somewhere else and then realized like and my mentality like, shifted. No, no, I want more. Mm hmm. Interesting. Exactly. And like my contentment was warped because I just wanted more. Okay. Like in an aerial type of way or something. Um, I'm having a hard time processing. <laughs> it's a lot. No, I'm I'm just, I'm a little like... My third one's the most normal. I just, you know, I know you say you don't believe this, but I'm also just like, I would like to ask Marianne how many people have had, have alien... Oh, no, she's done a lot of people. She's, she did say some people get aliens. It's just so interesting to me. I mean, it was like mine was so different. So the idea of having this like that your brain is conjuring this alien situation and that you're like sucking yourself down into Earth and like coming. I mean, I don't know, Becca. It's Weird. pretty wild. That's just me trying. She's to be, a motherfucking alien. Th that's just me trying to be different. You know, got to be unique. Aquarius vibes, you know. <laughs> like I cannot uh, be a normie on this planet Earth, bitches. Everyone's always like, you're an Aquarius. You like aliens, right? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, so <laughs> no. I was one, though. <laughs> you're like, have you ever heard of self-loathing? No, I don't like aliens <laughs> because I was an alien. Okay. They're not all they're chalked up to be. Okay. Let me just tell you, they have their issues, too. <laughs> I know you have your thoughts on them, but you wouldn't understand because you were not one of them. I had a lot of childhood trauma as an alien and honestly like you you <laughs> fetishizing my experience I would prefer that you don't do that yeah okay yeah. thank you yeah thank you yeah so <laughs> back, into the, back into the orb <laughs> so then I had like no choice so eventually I just like walked into that um light path like at the end of the tunnel and yeah. that was kind of like okay but I had a choice like I think we we were creatures that sort of um, we were back then <laughs> creatures that um, like there was no time or space like we were immortal or eternal but what there was this choice and I had this sense that I was just very mopey and then I was like fine like I'll just resign myself to just go into the light beam because I'm there's nothing for me to do here it was honestly very like angsty teenager vibes maybe teenage alien maybe vibes. you've decided to come here in this form and that's where you came from. Also, maybe you know how you have like massive fear of reincarnation that you will go into a place a that you don't state. like and you're miserable. Maybe it's because you had access in your alien life to be able to kind of go where you wanted and you saw. There's like, there's a lot of suffering here. Yeah. And you're like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and, and yeah, I mean, and I guess none of my, deaths were in either of the three that I went to were very um, emotional, okay. dramatic. So maybe that's not why I'm not scared of death. Maybe. I don't know. And maybe that's why I'm terrified. Yeah, because you sounded a little traumatic. Grace was too. Grace was too. Or him and I are going to have to really have a moment about that. Actually, your guys' were sort of similar. Kind of. Okay, before you dive into your third... Let's take a quick, a quick pause. <sighs> Broads, this might upset some people, okay, that are dealing with freezing temperatures and snow right now. But the past week in Los Angeles has been uh, sitting at like 80 degrees every day, which is my personal favorite temperature, Same. okay? It's just, it makes everything better when the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and there isn't a cloud in the sky. This spurt of beautiful weather did get me thinking about something, though. Like, where the hell are my sunglasses? Uh-huh. <laughs> I had to guess and based on your past experience and my past experience mm -hmm. they're probably either broken mm -hmm. or they're long forgotten in the bottom of your purse somewhere uh -huh. or they got uh left somewhere post sunday fun day sounds about right mm. well <laughs> you know what that's okay because sunglasses are made to be worn and loved as long as you're buying the right sunglasses like our favorites from blenders the number one reason jess and i love blenders so much is the price blenders offers premium sunglasses not little cheapy 
easily breakable plastic sunglasses that won't cost you an arm, your firstborn, and the deed to your house. So when you do inevitably misplace them, sit on them, whatever, it doesn't hurt as bad. Uh, But don't be fooled. Just because they are affordable doesn't mean blenders compromised on quality or style at all. Quite the opposite, actually. The team of in-house designers are constantly adding new styles like polarized wraparounds, colored lenses, classic black styles. They even have prescription glasses, readers, and blue light glasses. I already have a handful of blenders on the way that I cannot wait to style. Without a doubt, I will be living in my blenders this summer. To score 15% off your blenders purchase, visit blenderseyewear.com and enter promo code chattyvip. That's blenderseyewear.com, code chattyvip for 15% off. Blenders rocked with pride worldwide. So pets mean the world and geez, don't I know that right now, man. Um, Making sure your pet is happy and healthy so they can be with you for a long time is really important, which is why Fuzzy, in my opinion, is one of the most incredible services. Okay, so it's telehealth advice and services for your pets. Mm -hmm. Never heard of something like this before. It's such a good idea. It offers you 24-7 access to personalized pet care from vet professionals It's fuzzy. Fuzzy is there for you and your pet through everything from your basic everyday questions to middle of the night emergency. They've got your back because when your pet gets into God knows what, sometimes you don't have time to consult Dr. Google and you probably shouldn't. Right. And I know for Ashley, my chihuahua, she had a little skin issue the other day and the experts at Fuzzy helped us clear it up in no time and on a weekend. Right. It was amazing. Nice. Um, and if you're looking for some advice on how to get your pet's health dialed, Fuzzy's team can also evaluate your pet and recommend the best products handpicked by their team of professionals and offers um, at an exclusive discount just for Fuzzy members. Right now, Fuzzy, Fuzzy is offering our listeners a free seven day trial membership. Go to your dot com slash chatty today to sign up. That's a free seven day trial at Y-O-U-R-F-U-Z-Z-Y dot com slash chatty. And for a limited time, Fuzzy's offering a special discount of $20 off any of your pet's product needs from pet meds to supplements to food and more with promo code chatty. That's yourfuzzy.com slash chatty for your free trial of Fuzzy with access to 24-7 personalized pet care and vet recommended products. I love that name, Fuzzy. So cute. Okay, so, okay, yeah, so. And this is also why I'm a little bit skeptical. Sometimes I did feel like my brain was pulling on a like book or like like things I had exposed to references like books media okay, etc okay, okay. etc like I would be and I and I think we are exposed to like so much history and media it's different like I would be a little bit less of a skeptic if there was someone in a very an in, indigenous tribe member in a remote area and then they were like describing something mm-hmm. in a time and place that they had no idea about whereas we have so much referential brain stuff to choose from is something that I felt like I was noting where i was like i I feel like i'm pulling from stuff that i know about right already right so in this one for instance i don't know if you know but there's like caverns like the carlsbad caverns for instance where there are um like networks of caves where they're going like under you know where you can get like lot like you could get lost in them because Mm -hmm. there's so many different offshoots of tunnels and stuff um so I felt like I was a I basically felt like I was a, a like an adolescent age boy who was in going through these cavern tunnels things whatever and exploring and got lost and couldn't find my way back out and like the my candle went out and I was like I'm going to die and I like laid kind of curled up and laid down and like that was going to be the end for me because there was it was pitch black no way i could find my way back out um but then i did get rescued like they did get find me they did pull me back up i don't know how long the time was that passed or whatever but i had this feeling like it was really traumatic like it was really traumatic yeah. but but there was this but I was more like aware that it was traumatic for my family. Like they were looking for me. They couldn't find me. They thought I was going to die. Mm. And also I thought I was going to die. So there's that traumatic element too. So then I had this sense that I stayed very close to home 
for the rest of my growing up into adulthood stayed very close to like my mother to my family like in our village thing and uh and I got like married and had kids but I had this sense that like I like my life was happy but I was sort of mourning this loss of like innocence or mourning the who I was before I had this thing happen to me before mm. I was afraid of my family losing me before I was afraid of being in a situation where I would die and mm -hmm. the pressure that that would put on all my loved ones and I I had been like made aware of that and of, of my like mortality and my connection to my loved ones and the way that that would affect them at like such a young age that it affected mm. the way that I then lived my life because there was just like that fear in the back of my head and, and I couldn't undo that and it wouldn't be right to ignore that. So there was sort of this thing of like, yeah, sort of just like mourning who I could have been if that hadn't happened to like me and my family. And so, and then I had this image of like the way I died is I had this like, ha this little shack, hut, whatever, and had like this big open space. And I was like laying on my bed and I was pretty young probably like in my like younger than 40 and I was like looking out at these trees for my bed and I had some sort of like I don't know leprosy or some shit I don't know some sort of boils or something and I was just like laying and looking out at the trees and I was just sort of thinking of like damn like what my life could have been if it if I like didn't have that happen to me mm. and then I died did that resonate with you at all like when you were processing afterwards like well, one of the things that I like, so she does a little intake with questions. And one of the things that resonated or that like I scored high on was fear of being like powerless. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, that kind of makes sense because then there is this, there's this fear of um, like, basically it made sense in that, like in this life, I have such a desire to do so many things and to like go so many places mm -hmm. and in all kind of three of those like i died as if i died as a baby mm -hmm. then there was literally like no life that mm -hmm. was lived mm -hmm. at all then if i was this alien that wasn't able to like was grounded on the planet once they wasn't able to explore the galaxy i felt weighed down by that and then in the third one i got limited by your fear and trauma? I wouldn't even say it was fear and trauma. It was just like this knowledge of my mortality that I like wasn't supposed to have so young. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, a, it's like if a kid goes through war and it was just like, they, you can't unknow or unsee yeah, the things that of you've course. seen. So it just felt like that was out of my control too. It was like, I couldn't stop that situation from happening and that couldn't help but shift my perspective on every choice I made going into adulthood um so yeah that's why i'm here to yolo and live it <laughs> up baby but i don't know so that's and then that's kind of that interesting she that was like, the three that that was definitely a through line from mm -hmm, the three mm -hmm. so so yeah those are my past lives interesting it's interesting yeah because that was your through line my second one was very much like hey take ex take example from one of your past mm. and did live it up and did enjoy their time here and you're not doing that you need to because you're all caught in your fear web or whatever um but yours were like you didn't have that and mm -hmm. now you're like it's time to live so here's my thing though so you're not so from your perspective walking away from that you were like don't believe in past lives these were just my brain conjuring images that maybe were helpful for me. Is that what we're walking away with? Um, I don't think I would say it. I would say that I would say that I created an imagined narratives as prompted. Mm -hmm. And I think that those narratives that I created are revealing about the things that are holding me back okay or like the things that i need to pursue okay because there i think there's so much of our brain that we're not aware of you know it's like when you start going to therapy the first time you're like oh i didn't even realize that was holding me back right. and now that we're talking about it it's holding me back right 
but it's there all along. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that I kind of frame it. I'm like, I think that, I think that it's my brain trying to come up with like a past life narrative because you're also going into it being like, I'm going to, I'm going to explore you, you don't, the whole prompt of the experience is like, I'm going to explore my past life, yes. you know? Yeah, you're like, going into it with intention. Right, like we never have dreams or I've never had a dream where I go like, where it was so random and I was running away from these people and they were attacking me. I've never like woken up from that and being like, oh, maybe that was my past life where right. I was being pursued. Right, of course. You know? Yeah, with this, you're going into it with intention. Though I will say I had such an interesting conversation with Kendall uh-huh. uh, at your birthday about lucid dreaming uh-huh. and she's gotten good at it. Uh-huh. And she was like talking to me about what she's able to do in her dreams and stuff. And I'm like, I want to start trying that. She's like, I get to have all these experiences that I would want to otherwise because I've taught myself how to do it. Oh. Amazing. Um Okay, so that's what you took yeah. away from it. But you said you were really tired too. So well, that was one of my experiences was I was like, for the, ne- the next day I was zonked. Mm-hmm. And you said you were super tired right, too. I was pretty tired this morning too. It's interesting to me how your body, I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on, but it is exhausting. Well, it's very similar like to, uh, it's very similar to like a psychedelic experience and in that way because you are put into like a sort of like a meditative trance like state and and i will say like it's um we don't like usually put that mental that as adults we very rarely put that kind of mental energy mm-hmm. behind things mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. like how often do you just sit and lay and try to get to a state where you can even just like daydream like consciously not often that's like we're not uh we're not used to that no i mean honestly for me one of the only times like i've been trying to get like i used to do a lot of meditation which was great yeah. and i kind of got caught up and i'm trying to get back into it again because it is so helpful um but honestly i think for me the only time is when I get in bed Mm -hmm. and if I don't have the TV on or, you know, something on in the background, when I lay in bed and I like close my eyes and I consciously, I'm like, I'm going to start thinking about this. I love, and I used to do that so much when I was young is I would get so excited to get in bed and be like, I'm going to daydream about this right now. About falling in love with this person. Yeah, like, yeah. Or like, I just saw this, you know, let's use Lord of the Rings. Like I just saw Lord of the Rings and I'm going to imagine that I was in that and that I did this and da, da, da. And you'd create this whole exciting story or romantic story yeah. or whatever before bedtime. And I would, I would like look forward to that every night. That's cool. You know, I'm like, I need to start doing that more. Yeah, Just like letting cool. my brain just kind of... I mean, your life would probably, like, I, I bet, like, if all of us did that, our quality of life would like, greatly improve. Probably. Just letting your mind kind of wander and explore exciting spaces that yeah. maybe you can't do in, like, day-to-day life. Well, I, I I do get the, I did get, I do get similar feelings um after of, like, being tired or fatigued when I do brain spotting. So I do that every okay. week. Okay. And that's, like, an hour of, it, it, it kind of reminded me of that, because that's, like, an hour of concentrating and focusing on like a concept or something and you can get like very antsy doing it and then yeah. after you can feel very like <sighs> it's exhausted i need to get yeah. a wreck from your from your therapist yeah. so that i can start it i would love to it's good i would love to real quick give us a uh power lifting update a power lifting update i mean so far it's going great i am so strong now it's crazy i can't wait to like like you know publicly be like squatting you on right. the show right um no you know what it's been great it was i i in fact i went yesterday and i the second i like started doing like squatting lifts started bawling whoa just like letting out all of like the grief well you know the uh you do you know what they say about like your hip area mm-hmm. like all they say that you hold a lot of your emotions um like right here in your hip points 
uh, I don't. I oh. actually don't think that's the hip, but it's like sort of like where your yeah, your, your pelvis, pelvis and your hips uh, join. Oh, that's so, what I was doing. So when you do like Thai massage or something, you have someone like working their like elbow or something yeah. in there and pressing a lot. Sometimes there can be an emotional release. So if you're doing like those deep squats, you're also going to be like stretching out that part. Oh, that's what I was deep squatting into those Dude. emotions. Then oh no, I was bawling. And it was awesome though because I love my trainer that I have right now. She was just like, "Let it out, girl." Like it was all good, and I was like, "Thank you." And you were in the all women gym too, and well, they're just like, "It was." Kill there you. was no one in there. Oh. It was no one in there. It was just me and her and the bar. Yeah, and hell my yeah. tears. Hell <laughs> it yeah. was just like I was die. I was oh god, it felt so good, and I mm. felt really good afterwards too. I'm just excited to be getting into something that I'm enjoying doing that then I feel like clear after. Well, and also like okay i know it's so annoying when people are like anxiety and depression just work out and it's gonna get better but like i do wonder if you'll have a shift a big mental shift well you know i i've been like we've talked about like life's been kind of weird lately because i'm like i've been having all this mania again there's been weird family shit go i mean there's just been a a whole lot but then the mania on top of it and i'm like i really need to get my body moving because i have all this pent up anxious energy and i can already tell and here's the thing i would work out at home but i probably i wouldn't push myself no i never do right so it was like you know it's good to have those workouts in between great than to have someone like there and making you do like you know keep going and i'm pushing myself and i'm like oh man i already feel i just the, the past even though the past few weeks have been tough I'm like just having that there has been very helpful for my and mind just a release like like you said oh, yeah. like I, there's something to be said about like having a good workout and there's like a it's like it's purging your body of stuff you know mm-hmm. you're like letting it's letting shit go i know listen we're like all on like our mental health train right now right we're diving into past life regression we are we are power lifting we talked about mental health with we're brain spotting. we're brain spotting like you know we're just really clearing it out we're talking about the simulation idea <laughs> honestly that's what we are now so um speaking also of of uh wellness broads i found out um via instagram i have a friend who i haven't seen in a very long time mm-hmm. Um, and haven't like really kept a ton in touch, but I just saw that she recently started this new Instagram and I was like, oh, what is this? She is now a death doula. Oh yeah. I and have a friend who does this. I had never heard of that before. And I'm so interested. I like, so she did, she is a hospice nurse and yeah. she's also a death doula. Yeah. Such an interesting thing that I've been like, looking into. I'm like, I would love to like chat with someone about it because I feel like it's something that I hadn't heard about, but now when I'm discovering what she does, I'm like, I feel like this is like an absolute necessity. Yeah. My, uh, my aunt actually works in an elderly care facility and we were chatting over Christmas and she was like, yeah, all my, uh, all my coworkers like call me the angel of death, like jokingly. But she's like, um, she's like, I feel like I have a gift. And she was telling me how she will like, and, and, to be with the family, but also to be with the person. Like mm-hmm. she's like, I'll get in bed with them and hold their hand and let them know like that they can go. Cause sometimes people are holding on for family, holding on out of fear. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, I've, I've been able to sit and have a conversation. And then 10, 15 minutes later, they, they are gone. Yeah. Cause they're, I mean, it's just such something that I, I don't think because we are so in our, in our Western society are so uncomfortable talking very about death, removed from very the realities removed, of death, which too. is it's there's birth and there's death. That's something we all have in common. Right. And, and we're we very, just, we like to remove ourselves from all. And we that. love to remove ourselves from all of it. Uh-huh. And I think in recent days, thank goodness, birth has become more of a open topic to discuss mm-hmm. somewhat. I feel like death is still very like, very off the table and i feel like it's so important it's the end of an individual's life right. like of, a, of a, someone's life and i was just fascinated looking into all of her all of her stuff um because she was just talking about like you know the lists kind of the checklist that she goes through to help the person beforehand mm. like if there's any unresolved um you know problems with like let's just say there was an argument with a brother and they want to reach out to the brother she will like initiate like that reach out whatever is most comfortable to kind of solve that before there's a passing if like they they have a person i forget what she calls it but someone who has like your secret key 
who it's a little bit like someone who's in charge of making sure that like if you don't want, you know, internet searches there, if you want privacy about certain things that you don't want getting out, that they take care of that, that they keep the secrets for mm-hmm. you so that it's not getting passed around with the family Whoa. or whatever. Uh, just the conversations about like what you really want in like your last few, Whoa. you know, weeks or whatever, like what's going to bring you joy and and yeah, it's so, and being able to have like really open, clear conversations about that, that sometimes family runs from and doesn't want to talk about with the individual. And now will she work with people like, cause obviously most, most deaths aren't on a timeline or, a, or, are, you know, planned. Does she also work with families? I wonder like who have sudden deaths. So I don't like, know. and then they can I'm sure, hire. I'm sure she does. I'm sure she does does both yeah i was so interested i'm like oh my god i need to dive into that now that whole world but anywho lots of lots of wellness up in here um and we have some fun episodes coming up btw we have some fun comedians coming on here soon that i'm very excited about uh we're gonna do our wife swap episode we have a broad that we're gonna be doing an episode with very interesting story just a lot, a lot of goodness. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Tune in Tuesday. Tune in Tuesday. And Thursday and Friday. and Yeah, and make sure you forever. listen to Bros tomorrow. And I'm excited to talk <laughs> with Grayson about his oh past God, life. Can't wait. And Disney, but of course. But anywho, Brods, we love you so much. And um, we Chats will soon. We'll chat soon. Bye.